Hello geometry students and welcome to part one of our lesson on surface area. In our previous lesson we learned about three-dimensional solids like prisms, pyramids, cones, spheres, and cylinders. And in this lesson and the next one we're going to learn how to calculate the surface area of those types of three-dimensional solids. In this video we're going to learn how to calculate the surface area of prisms and pyramids, and in part two we'll learn how to calculate the surface area of cylinders, cones, and spheres. So what is surface area? The surface area is simply the sum of the areas of all of the faces. So for example, take a pair of dice, you know, like Yahtzee. A die is actually a cube. It's a special kind of rectangular prism, because all six of its faces are squares. So to calculate the surface area of a die, you would need to add up the area of all six of the squares that are the faces of that cube. That total would tell you the surface area. Now unfortunately not everything is as easy as a cube, because not all the faces of every three-dimensional solid will be a nice simple square. So in those situations you'll need to add up whatever the areas of each of those faces are. Now you can do that in two different ways. You can either just use the area formulas that we learned in Lesson 9a to just take it piece by piece and add up each face individually, or there are also specific formulas for each three-dimensional solid that will get you to the answer as well. For example, if you wanted to calculate the surface area of a prism, like this triangular prism that's on your screen right now, you have two options. You could find the area of this triangular base and the area of this triangular base, and then you could find the area of this rectangular face and this rectangular face, and this rectangular face, and add up all five of those areas and that would tell you your answer for the total surface area. Or if you prefer you can use this surface area formula, which is really just breaking down what I just said into one easy to use formula, because the 2b part of this formula is the area of both of the bases, which was the first thing that I described, which was finding the area of this triangular base and finding the area of this triangular base. Since those bases are congruent to each other, you really only need to find the area of one of them, and then multiply it by two. And then you'll add the perimeter of the base times the height of the pyramid. The perimeter of the base is all of these three lengths added together, and then you'll multiply that by the height, and that gives you the area of each of the three rectangles that wraps around these two triangular bases. So it's really the same thing as finding each of the three rectangular areas individually, but by adding up all three of their widths to find the total perimeter, you're doing it all in one step instead. Let me show you what I mean with this example. This is a rectangular prism, and since it's a prism, I'm going to use the surface area of a prism formula, which is S equals 2B plus PH. Remember that B is the area of the base. And for rectangular prisms, you actually get to pick which side is the base, because since they're all rectangles, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just going to choose the rectangular face that it's sitting on, which is the 10 by 13 rectangle. I'm going to use that as my base. So to find the area of that base, I would just multiply 10 times 13, because that's how you calculate the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area of each base is 130 square millimeters. I also need P. P is the perimeter of the base. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, you just add up all four of its sides. So I would add 10 plus 13 plus another 10 plus another 13, so the total perimeter is 46 millimeters. And then the last element that I need for my formula is the height, and that is the height of the whole prism, which is 4. Remember the height is the length that connects the two bases, and if I'm choosing the 10 by 13 rectangle on top and on bottom as my bases, 4 would be the length that connects those two, so the height would be 4. Now that I know B and P and H, I can plug those numbers into my surface area formula, like so, and then I would just plug that into the calculator and get an answer of 444 square millimeters. Now let's try the same thing, but for a triangular prism instead of a rectangular prism. Either way though, it's still a prism, so I'm going to use the same formula of 2b plus ph. 
So remember that B is the area of the base. The bases for this one are the two right triangles because they are congruent and parallel. So I need to find the area of this right triangle. The area of a triangle is equal to 1 half base times height. And remember that the base and height just have to be perpendicular to each other. So you might be tempted to call this length right here the base, just because that kind of looks like the side of the triangle that it's sitting on, or the bottom side of the triangle. But that's not really what we're looking for when we're trying to identify base and height. Base and height just have to be perpendicular to each other. And since this is a right triangle, I know that these two legs are perpendicular to each other. So I can call one the base and one the height. And it doesn't matter which one I call which, right, because they're the same number. So I'll say that the area is equal to one-half times base times height, which is one-half times six times six. And that would equal 18 square meters. Next up in my formula, I need P. And P is the perimeter of the base. Remember that the base is this right triangle, and I currently know two of the three sides. But what I don't know is this third side. How long is that? But remember, this is a right triangle, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate missing side lengths of right triangles. The two sixes are the legs of the right triangle, and the missing side is the hypotenuse, so I'll call that C. So 6 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. Crunch those numbers, and I find out that C is 8.5. So now I can calculate the perimeter. It's 6 plus 6 plus 8.5 which is a total of 20 and a half meters. The last thing I need in my formula for surface area is the height of the prism. The height is the distance between the two bases, which is conveniently labeled for me as 10 meters. So now that I know B and P and H, I can fill them into the formula like so, type that into the calculator, and get my answer of 241 square meters. So S equals 2B plus PH is the formula that you'll use for prisms, and this is the formula that you'll use for pyramids. It's S equals 1 half PL plus B. P is the same thing that it was in the previous formula. It's the perimeter of the base. L is new, though. Instead of the height of the pyramid itself, we want what's called the slant height which means it goes along the slanted side of your pyramid from the apex, the point at the very top of the pyramid, down to the base. And then B is, again, the same thing as it was in the prism formula. B is the area of the base. Remember, if you prefer not to use the surface area of a pyramid formula, you can just break the pyramid into its parts and find its area that way. So you could find the area of the base and then you could find the area of, in this case, each of the four triangular lateral faces that you see, and add all that together and get to your final answer. But really, this surface area of a pyramid formula is doing that for you. Like I said, you would have to find the area of the base, and that's what B is in the formula. And if you find one half times the base times the slant height for all four of them, you would need to add up all four of the lengths of the bases of each triangle, which would give you the total perimeter of your pyramid. So really this 1 half PL, that's just calculating the area of the four triangles. So whether you want to break the pyramid into its individual faces and add them all up, or whether you would rather use the formula, either way you'll get to the right answer. Let's look at an example. Here I have a triangular pyramid. I can tell it's a triangular pyramid because it has one base in the shape of a triangle and the other faces meet down here at the apex. So since it's a pyramid, I'm going to use the surface area of a pyramid formula. And the first thing I need is the perimeter of the base. You'll notice that the triangular base for this pyramid is actually the same as the triangular base on our triangular prism example. And I did that on purpose just to save us time that, again, since this is a right triangle and 6 and 6 are the legs, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that that missing side length is 8.5. So again, the perimeter of this, just like it was on the previous example, is 20.5 meters. Okay, but now let's talk about L. L is the slant height. The slant height is the distance from the apex along the lateral face of the shape to the base. So that's labeled as 11 meters on our diagram. 
and then B is the area of the base. And again, we already calculated that area in the previous example, that since it's a right triangle and the two legs are perpendicular to each other, you can use the 6 and the 6 as the base and the height. So the area of the base is 1 half times 6 times 6, which is 18 square meters. So now that I know P and L and B, I can plug those numbers into my formula like so, and then use the calculator to get an answer of 130.8 square meters. Our next example is a square pyramid. I can tell that it's not just a rectangular pyramid, but actually a square pyramid, because if you look at the side lengths of the base, well, one is labeled as 18, and then the other one is labeled as 9 and 9, but 9 plus 9 is 18. So the base is a square, and then I have four triangular faces that wrap around that square and meet at the apex, which makes it a pyramid. And since it's a pyramid, I'll use the surface area of a pyramid formula. So the first thing I need in that formula is P. P is the perimeter of the base. And since it's a square, all four of the sides of that base are all the same, so it's 18 times 4, or 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18, which is 72 feet. Okay, now I need the slant height, L. But I wasn't given the slant height, I was given the actual height. Notice how this dotted line that the 15 is pointing at, it goes from the apex inside of the pyramid down to the center of the base. That's the actual height, that's what we call H. And that's not what I need to calculate the surface area. I need the slant height, which means starting from the apex and going along the outside of the shape down to the edge of the base. You can think about this like a tent, and the height, H, is the tent pole in the center of the tent, but I don't want H, I want to know the distance along the outside of the tent from the very tip of the tent to the ground on the outside. But if you set your tent up correctly, the tent pole that holds up the tent would be perpendicular to the ground. So this little triangle right here, if you think about it three-dimensionally, it's actually a right triangle. Let me redraw it like this. I know that this length along the bottom is 9 feet, and I know that this length right here, the height, is 15 feet. What I don't know is L, the slant height that goes along the outside of the tent. So since it's a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side length. When I crunch those numbers, I get an answer of 17.5. So that's my slant height. The last piece of information I need for this formula is B, which is the area of the base. And since the base is a square, that's super easy to calculate. It's just side length squared, and 18 squared is 324. So now that I know P and L and B, I can plug each of those numbers into my formula, and then use the calculator to get an answer of 954 square feet. And that's all you need to know about calculating the surface area of prisms and pyramids. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate the surface area of cylinders, spheres, and cones.